going through the comments in my last video, I just want to make sure I'm hearing you guys right. Literally thousands of you want me to make an avatar flying thing or falcon wing or stuff like that. Do you want me to make a thin little staff that somehow transforms into a working glider that you can fly with? Huh? Like I even asked you guys how I'm supposed to do this on my Instagram story, at Jayla's video, which you should follow. And if you do that, I will come to your birthday party. I posted this. Y'all really want me to make this uh, avatar glider, don't you? How the hell am I supposed to do that? DM me, any suggestions would help. And just like always, your feedback was just better than I could have ever imagined. But nevertheless, if this many of you guys want it, you know, fuck it, you know, we'll do it. Let's try and fly like the avatar. What's the worst thing that could happen? All right, listen, if I'm actually gonna do this, the least you can do is comment an idea for something I should make in my next video. Or just thumbs up a cool idea that's already down there. I mean, you guys really didn't go easy on me for this one. So maybe go a little easy. You know what, Never mind. Whatever you want, comment it. Not gonna complain. I don't know how many flying jokes I can make in this video. And while you're at it, if you yourself have made anything cool, just DM me and uh, we'll feature it. Show me what you got. What you got. Honestly though, when I first started building stuff, I wish someone did this for me. It's really nice when people see your stuff and your hard work's actually appreciated. That's the goal with this little segment. Anyways, so here's what I'm thinking. Gonna make the avatar staff, but it'll be in the next video. It'll unfold and everything, look cool. Definitely subscribe for that. However, to actually fly like the avatar, we're gonna need to do something a little different. Like I don't wanna say it's impossible to make this sort of glider gadget. But judging by your suggestions, that's not gonna be easy. All right, so how are we actually gonna fly? Well, me and flying have a interesting relationship. Uh, it's sort of a long story, but trust me, it's relevant to the video. I've actually been trying to fly since I was 18. I should scratch that pretty much my whole life. And before you say, oh, Jake, just go get on an airplane or something. No, not what I mean. I wanna fly. Basically, I want a device that's as small as possible, gives me as much freedom as possible so I actually feel like I'm a freaking bird or something. I can't be the only one with that dream, right? So I tried building a paramotor. Unfortunately, my uh, arm ended up getting in the way of the blade and ended up breaking it. You know, super annoying, right? So didn't get to finish that project. It's a joke, not the blade hitting my arm. That did happen due to a uh, poor cage design. Basically, a big gust of wind blew the paraglider sideways, pulling my arm backwards and into the propeller. And yeah, prop took a big chunk out of my arm, a rush to the ER, 10 shots directly into the wound, 40 stitches later, uh, came out of there with a whole new perspective on this project. If you've been subscribed for a while, you probably remember that. Uh, so the journey continues six months later, after I'd healed and had some time to think, I decided to go with a different approach, a giant drone style hoverboard. It's basically a giant multi-copter big enough for a person. And instead of one spinning blade, we now have four. But I was definitely humbled by the accident, so safety became, it still is, it's number, number one priority. So I was gonna keep the drone fully autonomous until I'd done a bunch of test flights, a lot of weight testing, but master the controls and cover the goddamn propellers. So here we are. This has been my behind the scenes long-term project. I'd be lying if I said it's been easy, but I mean, that was the first drone that I'd ever built. So eventually I got that to the point where I could hover it around a little bit. And I still have all my limbs, but if we're gonna seriously do this, just barely working, ain't gonna fly. <laughs> so I rebuilt it better, faster, stronger. I, I need you right now. I actually modeled it all on SolidWorks, planned everything out beforehand, so it'd be essentially like a kit when I started putting it together. Then I scrapped the entire thing and remodeled it just to make sure. So I landed on an octocopter configuration with a slight propeller overlap uh, because I read a few studies on overlapping quadcopter propellers and found out the extra area you get from having bigger blades negates the negative effect from the prop wash of the propellers overlapping. So this configuration should give us the best bang for our buck. Also, this design is expandable, has a potential to add two, four, even six extra motors if we need them. Uh, the motors I'm currently using are 100cc Rotomac 167 kilovolts. 
uh, with 250 amp ESCs, all controlled by a Pixhawk Cube flight controller. Upgraded this from the DJI one I was using last time. Oh yeah, and all this stuff cost me a ton. So none of this would be possible without company sponsors like Greepow. They're a battery company that kindly provided me with the 16 6S LiPo batteries that we need to fly this thing. But they're not just any battery company. Like they do really cool custom batteries. Like look at these things. We got like paper thin batteries, circular batteries, curved batteries, and like weird polygon, a lot of different shape batteries. So if you're building a project and you got like a circular space to fit a battery, use a circular battery. Definitely check them out. Also built a rig to test the propeller's thrust. Just a simple rope attached to a scale, attached to a horizontal lever arm uh, with the motor on it. So it moves like this and gravity's not a factor. The propellers we used for my first drone were 27 inch wooden props, which maxed out at about 35 pounds of thrust. If you do the math, carry the two, divide by arc sine of the Yep, it's not gonna work. 280 pounds max thrust, minus five to 10% because of the cage we're gonna add, minus the 100 pound frame and motors. We're looking at about like 160 pounds of thrust. And I weigh more than that, so that ain't gonna fly. <laughs> I gotta stop saying that. So I ordered some new slightly larger 30 inch props, which got us to about 44 pounds of thrust. That was still gonna be very borderline, but you know, step in the right direction. Only problem, I only got four of them. And we need eight, and they all sold out. So I found something that I thought was similar and ordered eight more. But as it turns out, these new props, which aren't cheap by the way, they're too thin. Oh, that kind of cut my foot. So what happened is around 20 pounds of thrust, it would start flapping around and vibrating like the reeds an instrument. It made this horrible noise. Not good. Not good at all. Good thing we bought eight of these. So I finally ended up finding some good quality props. And these bad boys put out 54 pounds of thrust each and we got eight of them. Once again, if we do the math, 54 times eight, 432 pounds of thrust. Factoring the slight prop overlap and the limiting airflow because of the cage, call it minus 10 to 15%. Also minus like 100, 130 pounds, we'll call it be safe for the frame. It's still 240 pounds of thrust and I'm 190, so that should work. So after a whole ton of measuring and cutting, and socketing all behind the scenes while I was making other videos for you guys. We finally finished the frame. All right, let's do a little motor test. Got everything hooked up, all eight motors. Let's see what we can do. It's armed and now, all right. Nice, nice. Yo, wow, that's terrifying. All right, here's how we can test if the motors are actually being controlled by the flight controller and reacting to tilt and stuff. We just fire it up. We're gonna tilt it a little bit. See, when I tilt it one way, the motors turn on. When I tilt it the other way to counteract it, the other motors turn on. We designed the blades to actually overlap each other a little bit, so let's let's make sure they actually do and we engineer this correctly. So about three inches of clearance, should be fine. Now pretty much every other human drone I've seen stops here. They just hop on it and go. But due to my past experiences with these propellers, something doesn't sit right about having eight of them violently spinning around inches from my body. Like look at some of these, how is no one else worried about this? And we're gonna be completely covering this whole top area with some 550 paracord to create like a super strong net. Gonna test this thoroughly. Make sure no part of us or anything else gets caught in these propellers. So I got a bunch of paracord, 550 pounds working load for each strand, drilled holes all around the drone and threaded the cord through like this. Then we took it for a little test flight. All right, test one with the new setup. I am so nervous. Everything's on.
honestly couldn't have asked for better results. It was so rewarding to finally see this thing fly after so long. Good to see that hard work pay off. Uh, but there is still a lot more to do. Like right now, while this cage might stop your body, your hand could easily go right through. So I wove in cord in between, sort of like a net, and added some more bumpers to the outside to really encase these propellers. God, this part took so long. But we finally finished it and ready to test it out. First test, just had to fly it with the new modifications, make sure everything worked, good to go. Second test, 50 pounds. Third test, 100 pounds. Let's go for the old hundo. Fourth test, 150 pounds. Look what the doctor ordered, it's another 50 pounds. <laughs> 150 pounds, no problem. That's a person right there. Any small people, who's, re who's ready to fly? Mom, what are you doing later? Finally, the last test, 200 pounds. More than our way, so if I can get this, we should be good. All right, moment of truth, 200 pounds. <laughs> So close! Like it wants to fly. Almost got it, but it was just a bit too much. It's no doubt in my mind though, if we took off the cage, moved a little bit of metal, I think I could get it. But that's not what we're gonna do. I think we gotta add two more motors, either to the bottom like this or to the center. Yeah, because I'm not actually using that space for anything. We'll see what happens, but uh, that'll be in the next part, along with me actually trying to fly on it. But until then, here's a little taste of what I'm envisioning with trying to fly like the airbender. <laughs> Hopefully you guys like this project. I've been getting a lot of emails asking what happened to it. It's by far the biggest and most expensive project I've ever done. So it's really cool to be able to push the boundaries like this. It's all thanks to you guys supporting me by watching these videos and companies like Greepow for helping provide the supplies. Uh, but that's about it for this one. Remember, subscribe for part two, uh, making the avatar staff and actually flying. So we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>